Aida for telling my friend she either uses the mobility scooter at the mall or stay home? A little context, said friend weights 350 pounds, the only reason I know this is because we did that BMI thing on TikTok. Anyways whenever we'll go Toth Mall. She'll continuously make us stop because she's out of breath and needs to sit. It's really annoying because it takes the time we have shop. And not only does she make us sit, but whines about how tried she is while we're walking. It's gotten. To the point my group of friends and I have been, debating whether or not we should even invite her at all. So I was like you know what would fix this, why doesn't she just use those mobility scooters? First, she wouldn't be as tired and out of breath and second, it would fix our time issue. So my friends and I FaceTimed her and basically told her about our idea and asked if she was down with it. She almost busted it over this and went on to ask us if we were saying this to call her fat, I said no, and that we were asking because we can't deal with her constant having to stop. And basically how I didn't get why she was so offended when we were just trying to help. She called us a WFUL people and started saying how she couldn't control it because of her weight and we just needed to deal with it. I went on to say she was being selfish and asked how was it fair to us we waste all of our time because she makes bad food choices. And said it wastes either she used the scooter or she could stay home. She went on to cuss me out and hung up. All my friends think I was being nicer than they would have been and they're completely on my side. My mom. Thinks I was a little harsh but she said she sighty she'd probably would have also done the same thing. It got me thinking if I was the actual SS hole here. So Aida? Aida for getting someone arrested and fined over my boat? Two weeks ago I, 27M, along with two other friends did our annual week-long trip to our mutual friend Alex's cottage. For years one of our longest running jokes was that I should bring my 46 feet saltwater fishing boat to the lake. This year after looking up the lake's policies we decided to make it a reality. To make this happen we all split the costs of both the permit and the marina fees. And hash x200b. The first four days of fishing, boating went very well however the same couldn't be said for the fifth. The issue started over some fishing we did in the same bay as Alex's cottage. After using my fish finder we found a prime spot on the other side of it. Roughly an hour into us being there a woman, 20 to 30s, we didn't know kayaked across the bay. To us. When she got she asked to speak to the owner of the boat. When I introduced myself to her she started going off about how the boat isn't allowed in the lake. My response to her was to point at the lake permit in the windscreen before asking her to leave and not disturb us anymore. And hash x200b. This made her furious and she started cussing and screaming at us. For safety reasons Alex started recording her in case she did anything stupid. This only made things worse as she started trying to pull up our fishing and anchor lines. In doing this she wound up breaking my $3,000 rod. This was when her demeanor did a 180 and she began to pee lead with us to not call the police. As collateral, she offered to not only replace it but pay for next year's permit. I rejected the offer and used my VHF to call for police assistance right in front offer. The result of this was her getting fined for angler harassment and arrested for felony destruction of property, and hash x200b. Two days after all of this happened, Alex and his parents found themselves being visited by the woman's mother. From what he told me, she started going off on them and saying we are SS holes for getting her daughter arrested. She believes we should have accepted her apologies and offers to replace it. Looking back I am conflicted as what IDID could be considered vengeful as she DID legitimately offered to make amends, and hash x200b. Am I the SS hole for getting her arrested? Aida for telling my sill and mill that my son is not a junior and should not be called by my husband's name? I gave birth to mine and my husband's son last year and we named him Keen. The name was not popular among my husband's family. They have a long tradition of juniors. My husband, his dad, his grand PA, great grandpa and great great grandpa all have the same first and middle name. We broke from tradition with our son. With my husband's strong encouragement and support. Nobody really said much. When he was first born. We did notice some looks from his mom and sister especially but as long as they weren't telling us to change it then it's whatever. About a month and a half ago they started to call my son Malcolm and Junior. Junior didn't bother Mebbit when it was Malcolm and Mal and Malcolm Junior my husband spoke up. They said it was just a fun. Little thing. That he is the first grandson and the first in generations to not get the name. He said we don't want him to be a Junior. They assured Yusit would stop. But it didn't. 
My husband told them we should take a break from each other since they were incapable of accepting our son's name and continued to disrespect the choice we made by calling him what they wished we had named him. Sil sent me a FB message not long after saying it was a dumb name and we ruined our son's life by naming him after a band, especially a band who nobody his age will have heard of. I responded Thatch was entitled to her opinion and it was a good thing she didn't need to be around us when she feels that way. Then both Mill and Sil showed up at home while my husband was at work. I answered the door and they said we were being over the top over a name, and what was the harm in them calling our son the Namehe should have been given. I told him there was no name he should have been given. That we gave him a name we loved and felt would serve him well and that name was not my husband's name, that he is not another junior and they should learn to accept. That. They yelled that I was being too controlling and rejecting a perfectly good name and destroying a family tradition. I shut the door in their face. They called my husband's work line and said I was rude to them and super controlling. He told me to ignore them. But I wonder if I should have left this whole thing alone with them, Aida? Aida for refusing to tidy my SIL's house and getting her evicted? My 30F husband has a sister Anna, 29F, who lives in an apartment my husband gifted me with her boyfriend, Rick, and her daughter, Nine Mo. Anna doesn't work, and Rick has some on-off jobs and they are always struggling financially. I mention this because my husband sometimes helps them out with money, which is why a couple of days ago I went to the apartment to drop off some cash. I only intended to drop off the cash and go as Anna and I don't really know each other, but she opened the door and immediately ushered me inside. Her baby was crying, so she asked me to wait while she tried to get her to sleep, so I waited in the living room with Rick who was doing some kind of remote work. I could see the apartment was a mess but as a person who finds it near impossible to keep a room tidy without a baby, I knew I wasn't in a place to judge. That said, I did want to get on with my day so I was just lingering in the room hoping she'd come back soon. Anna came back after 10 minutes, with the baby still crying and said she was going to try feeding her. At this point Rick complained about the noise because he was working. I told Anna I'd be leaving too, but she started asking questions about depositing the money to a bank. I tried to answer her questions but really didn't know all the answers and said she could call her brother and he could tell her what to do. I could tell she was trying to keep me there but between the crying and Rick getting annoyed about various things, I just wanted to go. Anna then followed me to the door and asked if I would mind watching the baby while she showered and maybe tidying up her house a little bit. At first I thought she was joking but Anna said she was indeed serious, she could use the help. I told her I was definitely not the help and she needed to tell Rick to do it. She said he was sick of the apartment being a mess and that she hadn't showered in two days and that I had to do this for her. I told her. Once again I was not going to clean her house for her, and she demanded a reason, to which I said I didn't owe her one. Rick then came into the hall and said it wasn't like I had a job, I could afford to stay and help. Anna called me an evil, stuck up gall digger and a few other words I can't type out and eventually I left. After I left I called my husband to tell him what happened, and he was livid. He told Anna she had to vacate the apartment within three months and thought they would subsidize her moving at the rate HE currently was, which will mean she has to move to a smaller apartment in a less upmarket area. Anna Andrick have now involved my husband's whole family who said I could have just helped out for 10 minutes and avoided all the unpleasantness. My husband is on my side but I still feel bad that his whole family if giving him grief over this, so we don't know if maybe I do owe them an apology? Aida for sending my neighbor a ransom note? A couple weeks ago, my next door neighbor left a note in my mailbox. Apparently our trash carts we remixed up and he wanted his back. Which is fine. Buta wasn't exactly polite. The note read, you have my trash cart. The city assigns everyone a specific trash cart for a reason. I expect it returned in good condition. For reference, my neighbor is older. Probably in his 70s. We got along fine when we moved in. We saw him and his wife almost every day. We would say hi and chat and they always got our son something for his birthday. Things kind of went south about two years ago. Our house was built in the early 90s and was starting to look its age. We did new stucco, windows and doors. So now we have what looks like a new contemporary home next to their home which now looks worse than it did by comparison. I think this bothered them. Before the remodel, they would come out and say hi just about every time they saw us. After the remodel, the only time we spoke was when they happened to be coming or going at the same time. Maybe once a month at that, so back to the story. After getting his note, I made a ransom note. 
I cut letters and words out of my wife's magazines to write this, I have your trash cart. If you want to see Italib again, you'll do exactly as I say. Meet me at the Arroyo Bridge at midnight. No funny business. If I so much as smell a cop, you'll find your cart floating in the river. Anonymous. I thought it was funny. I thought he might even think it was funny. But the next day when I was leaving for the gym, he comes out and says, you're a real SS hole, you know. I was a little surprised, so I laughed. Which I think made him madder. I just replied, sorry, man, just making a joke. Let me get your trash can, they're identical as best I can tell. But, apparently he was pretty attached to his.